Hi everyone, and welcome to English for You. I'm Pat, and I'm Cat. And today we're going to be starting、uh, an article on stand-up comedy. So, Cat,、yeah. let me ask you something.、Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you hear that the president of IKEA is now the prime minister of Sweden? Is that right? Yeah, and he's now assembling his cabinet. Ah.、Oh. Okay, so this is so this is one of those one-liner jokes that、uh, maybe you'd hear from a stand-up show. That's、uh, you know not too great. <laughs> I, I quite liked it, but that yes, that, uh, that. <laughs> that was my attempt at humor to bring us into this article. What what kind of、uh, funny films and TV programs do you enjoy? Okay, well, I am a big Monty Python fan, so、mm -hmm. I really like the absurd humor in that. And、um, I think the most funny recent film I've seen is What We Do in the Shadows. Right. Ah,、uh, uh, the the awkwardness is so funny to me. Just, I、yeah. I don't awkward humor doesn't really work well for me. It's、oh, not my favorite type. I enjoy it as long as it's not you know extremely painful. As not as long as there's not people being like actually seriously impacted.、Mm -hmm. Like if it, it you know things like Borat, where people were actually really involved and they weren't aware that it was a joke. If everybody's in on the joke, I'm okay with it.、Mm. Yeah. I think mine are just the kind of really dumb humor. Sometimes the,、uh, the films like Airplane, Top Secret,、oh, the Naked Gun series,、uh, they're all made in the sort of eighties and nineties. Those by... are fun, but they don't make me like roll on the floor laughing. The,、oh, I the like the first times I saw any of those, I would I was actually in pain laughing so hard. Oh man! I mean, now I know all the gags, but I'll still watch them and still enjoy them. So there are a lot of differences, of course, with TV comedy where you write the joke and you plan things, and a stand-up comedy which is done in front of an audience. And we're going to look at some of these ideas as we find out about the art of stand-up comedy. Reading. The art of stand-up comedy. Someone is standing alone on a stage in front of an audience. They tell story after story in a funny way. There is no music. There are no props. Just a comedian with a microphone. This is typical stand-up comedy. Stand-up can be enjoyed at both large and small places, where famous and not so famous comedians alike perform their routines. Stand-up first developed in the U.S. from 19th-century comic speakers such as Mark Twain. However, entertainer Bob Hope probably did more than most to make stand-up a popular form of comedy. Hope had to regularly tour the U.S. during the late 1930s, so he decided to make fresh material by basing his jokes on the day's news or local gossip. However, it wasn't until the 1960s. That stand-up started to gain its adult quality. Comedians such as Lenny Bruce and George Carlin began to push the limits of what were considered to be acceptable topics. This meant that more adult jokes started to appear, and modern stand-up comedy was born. So we begin the article with a, a situation, a scenario for people to imagine. Someone is standing alone on a stage in front of an audience,、mm -hmm. uh, and this is an important part of stand-up because it's where it takes place. And a stage here means a raised area for performances. So bands could play on a stage. Actors will go on stage to do their plays. In movies, they have sound stages and other special areas where performances are done. It's somewhere that's usually higher, so the audience who are there can look up and see it, rather than not being able to see because other people are in the way.、Uh, or they could be all kind of on seats that go up, and the stage is down below in the middle. As、mm -hmm. long as they can see, that's fine, and that's the stage area. Here's an example sentence for stage: Our stage is small, so we can't do plays that have lots of characters all together. Okay, so somebody standing alone on the stage in front of an audience could be a disaster, but hopefully not. They tell story after story in a funny way. Hmm. Okay, could be quick jokes, could be longer funny stories.、Mm -hmm. We also see there is no music, there are no props, 
just a comedian with a microphone. Yeah. So no props. Props is short. It's the full word is properties, and it's anything that's small and personal that a character would use on stage, on TV, in movies. We're not talking about the larger parts of the set and furniture. We're talking about things they might pick up, interact with, use in a scene in some way. Those are the props or properties. And a comedic prop could be just something silly that they use as part of a joke. But、mm-hmm. those、I、are think... more often seen in a movie. You could have somebody breaking, dropping something. Whereas for a stand-up, well, sometimes props. I but... can think of a couple of stand-up comedians who would use props、yeah. a lot, like Carrot Top、yes. and who's the watermelon guy? No idea, but、uh, I've seen props in、uh, in stand up for sure.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I didn't actually know that they were called properties.、Mm-hmm. I just knew the word prop. Anyway, one of the things that you would use on stage as a stand up comedian is a microphone. That's what every stand up comedian needs. So a microphone is a device that people speak or sing into. Basically, if you are on a stage or you need to be heard by a large group of people or people in a large room. You'll use a microphone, and the microphone will play your voice out of some speakers to make the sound louder. So we're speaking into microphones right now to record this for you, and people sing into microphones, that sort of thing. And stand-up comedians will usually hold a microphone and walk around with it. So an example sentence: The singer's microphone was off during the first song, so the huge crowd couldn't hear him sing the words. Oops. Yep. Okay, so this scene: one person with a microphone walking around, telling stories. As the article says, this is typical stand-up comedy. The adjective "typical" means normal. It's usual. It's common. This is what you would expect in a stand-up comedy, and maybe eighty, ninety percent of stand-up comedy shows will be like this. There are different types, and we'll kind of look at some of those in day two. But typically, it's one person with a mic. Telling jokes and stories. Here's another example of typical. In a typical English exam, there will be reading, listening, and writing questions.、Mm-hmm. So a typical stand-up comedy show has no props, has just a person walking around with a microphone, telling jokes, telling stories, things like that. Stand-up can be enjoyed at both large and small places where famous and not so famous comedians alike perform their routines. Yeah, there are comedy clubs just about everywhere, aren't there?、Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they are performing things like routines. So those story after story things that's called a routine. A routine is a series of things like jokes or movements or maybe a song、uh, mix, something like that. That people learn as a whole performance, and then they repeat that at every show. So, if you're doing, for example, a stand-up routine, you will have the same set of jokes that go in the same order. Or if you're doing a dance routine, you'll do the same dance movements、uh, every time you perform that song. So, an example: Vanessa practiced her dance routine over and over until she knew all the moves perfectly. Okay, so that's what stand-up is. Let's look a bit about its history. The article says. Stand-up first developed in the U.S. from 19th-century comic speakers such as Mark Twain. So this is what it was before. You'd have a speaker, and the speaker would stand up at a big dinner or at a public event and tell funny stories or jokes, or maybe they would give a really important speech to get people's mood in the right kind of place. It could be a political speaker. Because a speaker is, in this case, someone who's got a good reputation for being a public speaker, and someone who maybe gets paid and gets work traveling to these places and giving talks in front of crowds. For a political speaker, it would be giving a political speech. A comic speaker is an entertainer, someone who comes and just tells funny stories and jokes to entertain a crowd and keep them happy. So these speakers, these people who would stand up and tell stories and would be invited to occasions to do this kind of thing, that's a speaker, and it's these speakers that started stand up. That's right. So nineteenth-century comic speakers, and then we say such as Mark Twain. So Mark Twain is a comic speaker, and you can tell by the phrase "such as" that he is an example of what was just mentioned. So "such as" is a phrase that we use after. Uh, talking about something to give an example of the thing we just talked about. 
Mm -hmm. So that was how things got started. People would give comic speeches, but things started to change, and we're going to see who was responsible for that. The article says, however, entertainer Bob Hope probably did more than most to make stand-up a popular form of comedy. So Bob Hope was an entertainer, and an entertainer is a performer whose job is to make others laugh and feel good. They will do songs, usually funny short ones. They'll tell funny stories. They'll do quick jokes. They'll say things that generally get people feeling good in a happy mood. That kind of thing. Maybe they'll be an entertainer, like a children's entertainer who makes balloon animals, does silly dances, just does fun things to get the children happy. Bob Hope was more for grown-ups. Yeah, exactly. Um, didn't he perform for soldiers a lot? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think he he uh, and that explains the time period because the article says Hope had to regularly tour the U.S. during the late 1930s. That was when World War II was happening. A lot of people were in the army. They really needed someone to cheer them up and make them feel better and make them laugh. So that's what he did.、Mm-hmm. So in that sentence, we said that Hope had to regularly. Tour the U.S. in the late 1930s. Here we're using the word "tour" as a verb, and it means to go to somewhere on a tour.、Uh, there's "tour" as a noun. A tour is a kind of extended trip. You don't just visit one place and go home. You kind of go a place, and then you go another place, and you travel around, seeing all the sights. And if it's a working tour, you might go somewhere and do a bunch of different jobs, or in Hope's case. Performances at all these different venues or areas, different stadiums, in front of different groups. A sports team might go on tour and play games in a bunch of different cities. So he toured the U.S. He went on a tour. He did all these different shows. And of course, if you do the same show again and again, the same routine, to use the word from earlier, your audience might get kind of bored of it, and you would get kind of bored of it. And he had to do a lot of these shows. So, as we see in the article, so he decided to make fresh material by basing his jokes on the day's news or local gossip. Here, material means the jokes and stories he tells, the things he says on stage. And he's basing these on a particular thing. To base something on something else means to use the second thing as the starting point. To base A on B, B is the starting point, and you develop it into A, the something else. For example, you might base a movie on a book or something like that. You might base a movie on a real event. Exactly. So what he based his jokes on were the day's news. Which is very easy to talk about. People talk about that all the time. Or local gossip, which is, I would argue, even more entertaining, because gossip is information about other people's personal lives and behavior. It's not anything big news. It's just things you heard about other people. So maybe I heard some gossip that.、Uh, Maybe a coworker is getting married soon,、Ooh. or I heard some gossip that somebody got in a fight with another classmate. Oh、Uh-oh. my goodness! Yeah, so it's things like that. So you know, if somebody likes to spread gossip, they are also called a gossip. So an example sentence is: Jen likes to spread gossip about other people in her class. It's really annoying.、Mm, gossip can also be a verb. You can gossip about people,、mm-hmm. gossip about things. Yeah. Did you hear? Yeah. You now, hear? sometimes you'd say gossip is not good, but it's one of those things that people do.、It's、it just is part of life.、Mm-hmm. And you can imagine how this worked for the soldiers at his shows. He finds out some things, maybe about some of the officers, and then he tells <laughs> some jokes to the soldiers, like, "Hey, I heard about Colonel So and So, and blah blah blah." Oh. Everybody has a good laugh at the colonel. Yeah. Yep. So this was how it went, and it was fairly fun, fairly light-hearted, just simple kind of jokes at this point. But stand-up was soon going to go through a bit of a change. The article says, however, it wasn't until the 1960s that stand-up started to gain its adult quality. Ah,、oh, but it's、so, like you already said that Bob Hope was an adult kind of yeah, comedian. But, exactly, but I think、uh, when we're talking about adult, we we mean the kind of things that adults would talk about but wouldn't talk about in front of children.、Mm-hmm. 
Mm. And it's also the kinds of things that some people might think, oh, that's not acceptable. You can't、ah. talk about that and joke about that in public. So.、Gotcha. You know, sex and other things like that. Yes, exactly. Right, and we're saying that stand-up has an adult quality. Here, we're using the word quality to mean a kind of distinct characteristic about something that's easy to recognize and often associated with it. It's a key component about or of what that thing is. For example, the pictures in this children's book give it a charming quality and help it stand out. So people know this book is charming. The illustrations make it so. So it has a charming quality. Now, in that sentence, we've got a grammar point. It it is or it was not until something that, and then there's another subject verb clause. And what we're saying that until the first thing happened, the bit after the not until, the second thing didn't happen. We're showing that. A particular event needed something else to trigger it. It needed something to happen before it could happen. For example, you might say, "It was not until I looked at my watch that I realised how late it was." So that you didn't know, you had no idea, and then you looked at your watch, and then you realised it was late. Mm -hmm. So these days, stand-up has an adult quality. You think of stand-up, you probably think of some. Dirty、Racy、jokes, jokes and、yeah. yellow jokes, as you guys might say. <laughs> exactly. So the article mentions a couple examples of that. Comedians such as Lenny Bruce and George Carlin began to push the limits of what were considered to be acceptable topics. So in this sentence, we have the phrase "push the limits of something." To push the limits of something means that if the limit, think of the limit as what is allowed. And if you push the limits, you're trying to do a little bit more than what's allowed, so that afterwards you've kind of moved what the limit is. So they're trying to tell jokes that maybe before wouldn't have been accepted, but now they're trying to go. Well, we can tell a few that are just crossing the line, and maybe after that, more people will be allowed to tell these jokes. The limits of what is acceptable has been pushed or extended. I remember George Carlin has a very famous routine. On curse words,、mm -hmm. the seven words you can't say on TV,、wow. and I will not say them because you can't say them. <laughs> right.、Yeah. Yes. There's.、Uh, yeah. If you go to a stand-up show, you're going to expect to hear some things that might make you go like, "Whoa!" Yeah. That is a little bit. A、uh, little、mm -hmm. bit. Yeah.、Mm. Not going to repeat that to my kids. Yes. Exactly. And as we see in the article, this meant that more adult jokes started to appear. And modern stand-up comedy was born. Of course, if the audience is responding well, if this is what they want to hear, more comics, more comedians are going to start doing it. And so, I mean, these days you have a range. You have、mm -hmm. some comedians who will do kind of silly humor, yeah. You know, different word play humor, just tell kind of short jokes, funny stories, yeah. And then you'll go all the way to people who say things like, "Whoa, can he say that? Can she tell that joke? Is that、yeah. acceptable?" Exactly, and there are clean comedians. There are dirty comedians. There's all in between.、Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's、that's, something for everybody. Yeah, and that's how we get modern stand-up. Now we're going to look at a few different types of stand-up performers and different ways you can do this kind of comedy in day two to give you some examples of how it works. But right now we're going to go to today's for you chat question. All right. So our for you chat question for today: Have you ever been to a comedy show? If so, how was it? If not, would you like to? Ah,、uh, yeah, I've been to quite a few actually.、Uh, really? Even when I was、uh, first year at university,、um, a comic called、uh, Peter is it Peter K, who got quite famous、Sounds、later、familiar. on after I saw him,、oh. came to do a show at our university accommodation, like our bar area. Um, later, on the fir first time I went to New York with some friends, we thought we're in New York. We've got to go to some stand-up comedy acts.、Uh -huh. uh, didn't see anyone famous. We just went to see like smaller comics doing shows. But yep, that was fun. And out here in Taipei, I know quite a few of the some foreign, some local stand-ups who do shows、oh, yeah. locally. I've seen quite a few of them.、Um, I've been. In shows where some people have done stand up, and I've been part of a group doing other kind of 
funny scenes, something okay. we'll kind of talk about a bit. I'm, I've, I've said to one of the guys, I can't do stand up. I'm not a person who writes jokes and thinks in that way. It's not what I'm good at. I'm、mm-hmm. more like react to something in a funny way kind of humor. Yeah, that's me too. Take part in a funny scene. Yeah.、Um, but yeah, I've, I've been to quite a lot of stand up shows. Have you been to any in Taiwan? In Taiwan, no.、Um, in my hometown, I went to see Jim Gaffigan when he was、okay. on tour. Heard of him? Yeah, he's, he's quite famous. He's done a few Netflix specials. He's one of the what you would call clean comedians. His, most of his jokes are about food、mm-hmm. um, and family and being a fat, pale white guy、okay. because that's who he is.、Mm-hmm. Um, I laughed till my face hurt. Right. Really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, a lot, of good can,、uh, a lot of good comedians out there. And no matter what your taste is, if you like silly humor, music humor, yellow humor,、mm-hmm. you're always going to be able to find a few.、Yeah. It was funny in New York because、uh, we'll see tomorrow some of the strategies, but they, they look around the crowd and they ask you a few questions. And when they find out that me and two other guys are British, then. Immediately,、oh, they start to be a, targeted. A, yeah, there's a few jokes about British people, you、yep. know, references to us all being football hooligans or and having bad teeth and stuff like yes, that. Yes,、yep. that, that sort of But that's good. You know, that's、yeah. it, it allows stand up is not just one person telling jokes, it's often some back and forth, which we'll again we'll mention that tomorrow. But the audience can really get involved in these shows and, and make themselves a part of it as well. So that's a good place to leave us and join us again tomorrow where we'll look into this sort of thing. We'll talk to you then. Bye for now. Bye bye. Vocabulary review Stage. At the end of the play, all the actors stood on the stage and bowed to the audience. Microphone. The singer was singing with her microphone. But the audience could not hear her because it was turned off. Typical. Ivan looks like a typical tourist when he stands there holding a camera. Routine. The musical comedian always changes her routine, so the crowd never knows which song will be played next. Gossip. Have you heard the latest gossip about Dan and Carol? They got into a big fight. Quality. The city is busy and crowded, but it has many great qualities too, such as friendly people and good food. Prop. <音>以上节目是由活用空中美语制作。活用空中美语杂志，请洽询全国各大书店。如遇索取视听教材，请来电零二二三六四四零零零零二二三六四四零零零，或上网查询，网址是 triple w dot english 四 u dot net triple w dot english 四 u dot net。